Scientific discussion and research on global warming has been ongoing for countless years. Unfortunately, global warming has taken a great toll on the world, particularly the richly biodiverse South Australian region. Good evening, I'm Yoria Hashim and these are my colleagues. I'm Celine Siltas. I'm Sydney Ramley. I'm Elias Pack. And I'm Hunston Kane. We're investigating the extent to which global warming has disrupted the wildlife ecosystems in Southern Australia over the past 20 years. From looking at the warming related events since 2000, analyzing how the economy fuels rising air temperatures, how ocean temperatures have changed, and how animal and plants are put in danger by climate change. We've concluded that a switch must be made to renewable energy. Making the switch specifically to solar power would allow for a reduction in carbon emissions, a slowing in the increase in temperature for Southern Australia, allowing for the overall protection of its wildlife in the area. Global warming has a brought major changes to the wildlife ecosystems of Southern Australia through natural disasters. The Millennium Drought was one of the worst droughts ever recorded in Australia as a heavily impacted biodiversity. In 2002, reporter Matthew Cowood traveled to New South Wales of Australia and describes a scene in Mutawinji National Park where a male wallaroo is drinking delicately from a shrunken water hole surrounded by corpses of those who are less resilient, kangaroos, wallabies, and goats. Paul Burton, a worker for the National Park and Wildlife Service, explains that some plants are going into death rows and are responding to a last reproductive fling. In 2009, the largest bushfire Black Saturday was recorded in Victoria, Australia. According to the BBC, the ferocity of the Black Saturday fires were equivalent to 1,500 atomic bombs. As shown in the bottom left image, the fires left the land with little biodiversity. In addition to droughts more, to bushfires, more, a, mass, a mass bleaching of coral happened in 2017 due to the increase in temperatures of the water and the accumulated heat stress. This affected a third of the Great Barrier Reef, leaving an unbalanced ecosystem. Furthermore, the 2019-2020 bushfire, which lasted for about five months, affected humans and the ecosystems alike. According to an article concerning bushfires, more than 10 million hectares of land were affected, which is now comparable to England's land area of 13 million hectares. You can see this comparison to the image on the right. The damage to land, as most people know, affected koalas and other wild animals greatly. In the same article, Kangaroo Island, an island part of South Australia, affected the land impact, the fires impacted South, the Kangaroo Island greatly to the point where their fears it may never recover. Along with the many historically prevalent natural disasters, in recent years, Australia's economy has been on a mass decline. An environmental researcher states that $3.4 trillion in economic opportunities will be lost if the climate crisis goes unchecked for the next 50 years. With this, the production of coal has been heavily increasing as well. In order to combat the negative effects, the economy has been projected to bring. In addition to being one of the main aspects of the Australian economy, coal has been one of the main contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, which cause global heating. All of these events have occurred in order to somewhat salvage the decline caused by the economic downfall in Australia. It has been documented that Hunter Coal, located within Southern Australia, is Australia's single largest source of carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere. With such heavy reliance on fossil fuels within a single area, it has caused countless negative impacts towards the wildlife living within the area. The lack of rainfall within southwestern Australia is located, is noted on the graph on the bottom left. This can likely be attributed to the use of coal as the greenhouse gas effect causes heating, which prevents rainfall. This has caused wildlife species in the area to be unable to live in their environments. Using renewable resources would allow for the wildlife within the area to live properly, as the threat of air pollution is decreased with the reduction in the use of coal. This would also allow for less reliance on the use of coal, therefore allowing for more importance on other major aspects of the economy. The decline in wildlife tourism is shown on the graph on the bottom right, which also happens to be a source of finances to Australia. In implementing renewable resources, more areas within Southern Australia could be utilized for the ever-growing market of wildlife tourism. The damage humans have done to the environment, such as the coal burning Celine mentioned, has had enormous effects on cold regions, one of the most severe being the melting glaciers, such as those in Western Antarctica. In 2013, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change found that the average rate of ice loss for the Antarctic ice sheet has likely increased from about 30 gigatons, that's 30 billion tons per year, between 1992 and 2001 to about 147 gigatons per year between 2002 and 2011. Um, the acceleration of ice loss has more than quadrupled from what it was before 2001, ending up in the hundreds of trillions of pounds. Melting glaciers cause the cycle of warming for um, the South Pole. When ice melts, um, due to the increasing air and water temperatures, it contributes water to the ocean that can then be warmed, while also taking away the ice, a source of cooling for Antarctic air. 
Melting glaciers are also causing changes in sea levels for the entire globe and the world's oceans. For example, a PhD in glacial geology reported that the Western Arctic Sheet is now contributing four tenths of a millimeter of water to sea level rise every year. As you can see from the teal line on this chart, the West Antarctic ice sheet has been increasingly contributing to sea level rise since 1990 and accelerating even more as it approaches this year. Southern Australia is the closest coastline to the West Antarctic ice sheet, so sea level rises there are greater than average. A big problem with this is that erosion will increase, meaning coastal coral reef ecosystems will receive less sunlight and the nutrient content of their water will be destabilized. Some countries, such as Indonesia, are implementing coastal mangrove trees to combat um, erosion due to sea level rise, but this solution will be meaningless if the sea level continues to accelerate um, in getting higher at this rate. Apart from harming those who depend on coral reefs, climate change has led to the loss of animal life by introducing invasive species to certain areas. As stated by the New South Wales government, climate change promotes invasion through extreme weather events and higher temperatures, which influences animals to move to places where they have no natural predators, allowing them to steal food and resources from other animals that need them. For example, donkeys and camels have become invasive to the wetlands of Australia with wild cats and foxes invading animal refuge sites. As ecosystems are warm, they garner the condition and attract species from more northern habitats, which severely hurts the hierarchy maintained in a functioning ecosystem. As seen in the graph, invasive species is the second leading cause in the decline in animal population, with 60% of species being affected and 80% of endangered species. As stated by Ciro, any changes made to animal and plant distributions will end up affecting the relationships between these. And this means that some species will inevitably go extinct due to the changes in wildlife abundances and composition of communities that this brings. It is clearly stated that any changes made to connections will end up changing away in ecosystem works, which can give too much power to certain animals. Certain predators will have to worry about additional predators of their own, leaving their prey to overpopulate, giving them the ability to hunt other species at the point of extinction, as well as drain resources that may be necessary for other species to survive. Trapping of invasive species has been tried before and has been largely unsuccessful. So one way to be rid of them would be to relocate them to their original habitat. Although this doesn't help in the long term, nor does it address the root of the problem. In addition to the harm global warming does to animal populations that Eli touched on, it also ruins the condition of soil in various agricultural areas in Southern Australia. It can ruin natural processes for plants. South Australia's Environment Protection Authority states, increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations can directly affect important physiological processes such as photosynthesis, plant growth, water use efficiency, and decomposition in agricultural areas. Global warming also affects photosynthesis because the process requires a certain amount of carbon dioxide, but global warming overloads the plants with the amount of carbon dioxide that they're allowed to take. Due to the growing amount of carbon dioxide during global warming, this increases the, re this increases the rates at which plants will experience decomposition. Peter R. Gray states, under a high emission scenario, the Australian continent becomes a source of carbon dioxide with a net reduction of 6.4% in topsoil carbon when compared, when compared to no climate change. This concludes that the high emissions given from global warming damages the conditions of soil. Most of the land in Southern Australia has struggled to maintain peak condition for a long period of time. It needs to have greater amounts of soil to benefit plants. If the right amount and type of soil is put on land in Southern Australia, they will be able to withstand the amount of carbon dioxide given from global warming. Global warming also heavily affects livestock and crops. As you can see, this graph on the right displays the amount of lands in Southern Australia affected by droughts. As how this graph is scaled is that the darker shades, the darker shades of the places in Southern Australia are the places experiencing the most and being impacted the most by droughts in Southern Australia. And the lighter shades are the areas in Southern Australia impacted by the least, even though these areas of Southern Australia are still experiencing droughts. This shows that crops will not be able to survive because they will have to experience hardship due to the lack of rain that will be able to benefit them. The conclusion is that a long-term solution is necessary, and the best option is a switch to renewable energy. Solar energy is the ideal form of power for Australia because of the country's vast stretches of flat, dry terrain that is exposed to frequent sunlight. A common argument against switching to renewable energy is the cost, but the energy generated by solar farms um, will be cheaper than mining for and processing coal in the long run, and the investment will greatly decrease Australia's carbon emissions. It is true that even if renewable energy is used, rising temperatures cannot be put to a stop immediately, and species damage will not be undone. But changing the way energy is produced will prevent more species from going extinct or animals from invading the range of other animals. And these are all the sources that we've referenced today. Thank you. What are your questions for us? 
All right, I do have a question for each of you. Uh, we're gonna go first to you, Sydney, so you're up. Um, describe an argument from one of your peers' reports that make you think differently about your solution, con so, I guess for you, uh, solution. Uh, one argument that um, made me think differently about our solution was Henston's. When he talked about the way plants were impacted by carbon dioxide, I thought it was really interesting to think about the scale of how deeply ecosystems are impacted by global warming because me and Elias focused our research on how animals were impacted mostly, but realizing that the, lock, the, the lack of photosynthesis and decomposition of plants could kill the entire ecosystem before the animals died from heat was really expanded my view of the issue. Okay. Yodia, you're up next. What is the strongest counter argument to your solution that your team identified? Well, the strongest counter argument that we identified was Celine's argument on coal, with the relation of coal and the economy. We through her argument and research, we found that coal is heavily related to the economy of Australia, and it's a really big part of it. And if our solution was, and our solution is to use solar energy, which replaces coal, that it will have that effect, the, the effect of replacing solar energy, the effect of replacing coal with solar energy would have a big impact and possibly a negative impact on the economy of Australia. All right, thank you. Elias, you're up. In what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? Um, in working with the group, I learned a lot to plan in advance because we had a lot of scheduling conflicts that arose from different extracurriculars. Um, that we were all in, such as Celine and SGA and me being in track. And we also learned to use new platforms such as Zoom in order to better communicate with the group. So there's a lot of learning curve in getting to know all these new programs and softwares that we have to use for this project. All right, thank you. Celine, reflecting on the work of your partners there in the, in the group, which one had the greatest impact on your overall understanding of the issue? I believe that Sydney had the greatest impact on my overall understanding of the issue. Since I focused heavily on how the economy is affected, I never really expanded my views until I read Sydney's paper and read her research. I understood that um, the oceans are so severely affected by global warming and climate change and that if actions are not taken immediately, the economy and the wildlife will be affected so severely. All right, and Henson, uh, describe how the content of your presentation changed as a result of you guys talking? Um, I would say communication was key throughout this. As we talked, we looked over each of our IWAs, we looked over our main points that we put in the slides. Uh, for example, when I was talking about at first, I was talking about animals, but Sydney and Elias already talked, they already touched on animals a lot. So they changed this and they made me switch onto an agricultural, agricultural perspective to learn more about plants which gave different viewpoints from each of ours to combine that into making an equal solution. 